Welcome to Wellness with John, resources to help you thrive. I'm John Peters. I'm a therapist who's been in practice for 25 years, working with thousands of patients through mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. And in today's episode, I'm going to talk about jealousy and envy, which are the two most toxic emotions in people's emotional lives, typically. And I want to talk to you about how they can be toxic, but also how you can work with them constructively and detoxify your jealousy and envy. So stay tuned. Okay, so in today's episode, I want to talk about jealousy and envy, which can be the most toxic parts of a person's emotional life if you don't deal with them constructively. But I want to tell you how they can become toxic and then also how you can work with them constructively so that they aren't toxic and actually become helpful parts of your emotional development and supportive of good relationships with yourself and others. Okay, so first let me define how I work with jealousy and envy just in terms of what they are. Jealousy is when we have feelings and an emotional response in an experience where we have a fear of loss of control or a fear of loss of something that we have or that we think we have. Okay, so that's jealousy. So if I'm hanging out with a friend and then my friend starts hanging out with another friend and spending less time with me, I am jealous of that because I think that I have this ownership of access to my friend and that's getting threatened or diminished. So jealousy is the fear of losing something that we have or think that we have, okay? It's highly related to, but different from envy, okay? And envy is when we have feelings and emotional responses to something that causes us to have a severe sense of lack, okay, that we want something that we do not have, and not only do we desire something, because we can desire all sorts of things and not feel envy necessarily, but envy is when we have this very poignant, strong feeling of lack in response to something that we don't have, right? So we see someone else and we make a comparison of our experience versus what we perceive, and we envy that other thing, right? And so jealousy and envy are different in that way, but for most of this video, I'm going to lump them together and just say jealousy unless I want to differentiate jealousy from envy because they function in a lot of the same ways in terms of how they can become toxic and the things that we can do to deal with them constructively, okay? So one thing about jealousy is that it is such an icky feeling that when we feel it, um, we want to escape it, right? Or if we have a partner or uh, we're interacting with another person in a relationship and we're aware of their jealousy, we have this vicarious feeling of ickiness too and we want to escape our own sense of their jealousy and we want them to not be jealous. And then, as I'll describe here in a second, the ways that jealousy and envy become toxic become things that we want to escape as well. So there's secondary miseries that come with jealousy and envy if we don't deal with them well, right? So what happens is with jealousy and envy in terms of their being toxic is they either turn inward or they turn outward, okay? And what I mean by that is we have the, the trigger, whatever the stimulus is, and then that experience causes us to turn inward either with shame or negative self-comparisons, negative self-criticisms, even um, hits on our self-esteem. Okay, that's when it turns inward. Um, or we turn it outward in an attempt to control the situation, like another person, for example, like, like if, if I see my partner talking to another person at a party, and I feel jealousy, and I turn it outward, I might uh, act in a way that discourages my partner from talking to other people, you know, so that's an outward turn. And so obviously, if we turn it inward, 
then that becomes toxic if it becomes shame and negative self-criticism. And if we turn it outward in some sort of aggressive or controlling, unhealthy way, it becomes toxic in the relationship, okay? And again, it's sometimes that secondary thing that becomes the problem. So often when couples come to therapists like me and they say, yeah, we, 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 jealousy is popping up and, and it's this awful thing and we want to escape it. And I say, well, okay, so how is it showing up? Often what they're describing is that outward controlling behavior or that inward shame behavior of it turning inward and becoming toxic in that way. So just to recap really quickly so far, when we feel jealousy, it's one of the least comfortable emotions in our emotional palate. And it tends to cause us to quickly want to not feel jealous, okay? That urge to escape the experience of the feeling of jealousy is what causes a very strong compulsion to either turn it inward into a shame or a self-hit in some way, or to turn it outward in an attempt to control the world, okay? So the ways that jealousy and envy are most toxic is when you have a situation where you have the onset of the feeling and you have a very quick attempt to escape it that is destructive instead of constructive, okay? And that's why people get into trouble in relationships and why jealousy becomes something that erodes intimacy uh, and can toxify a relationship. And it's also why it can erode self-esteem and it can cause anxiety and mood issues, right? And so here is the recipe for dealing with it more constructively. Number one, you have to see jealousy and envy as normal parts of your emotional life because part of that strength of the compulsion to escape it is an underlying belief that a lot of us are walking around with and it just naturally happens unless you counteract it with this rational axiom that I'm giving you now. We have this belief that it's so icky that it represents failure. It's so icky that it represents an emotional injury, okay? So basically, we walk around with this idea that jealousy and envy are wrong. And to the extent that we feel it, we are wrong. And maybe in the grand scheme of things, when we all become super enlightened, we will be free of jealousy because we don't do comparisons. We have perfect egos and perfect self-esteem and perfect relationships with everybody. But the thing is, we are human beings. I am, you are, everybody is, your partner. Everybody is a human being. Jealousy and envy are normal parts of life, but we can choose to deal with them constructively. And the recipe to do that is first recognize that they're normal, right? We don't want more of it, right? But it, it's normal. It's going to be there part of the time. So we accept that jealousy and envy will pop up from time to time, sometimes by surprise, sometimes by things that we're familiar with, but they are normal parts of life. So that's, that's recipe element number one, okay? Recipe element number two is because we accept that it's going to pop up, not that we want it to pop up, but it is going to pop up, then what we're going to do is we're going to say, when it pops up, I am going to spend at least a little bit of time reflecting on where it's coming from, okay? So if I feel jealousy, I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to say, what is it that I fear losing? That is the question to ask yourself. What do I fear that I'm going to lose? And you need to be honest with yourself when you reflect and identify the thing that you think you're going to lose, okay? If it's envy, you want to say, what is it that I think that I lack? What is it that I want that I think that I lack? Okay, you have to identify those because that is element number two in the recipe, which leads to element number three, okay? Element number three is your choice point. You are going to say, once I identify, I'm having the feeling it's normal, and it's either I want to not lose something or I think that I lack something and that's affecting me. Then you're going to decide rationally, do I think that in some way that awareness can constructively help me do something, okay? And let me give you an example from practice uh, of a couple I worked with one time. 
So um, I, this couple came in, they'd been dating for a short period of time, like nine, 10, 11 weeks. And they said that one of the reasons they came to couples therapy is because jealousy was showing up and it was, they thought it was potentially unhealthy and they wanted to find a new way to work with it. And so one of the things I asked them was, okay, give me an example of a recent time that this popped up and why you think it's unhealthy and how you want it to change. So they said, okay, so we were at this party the other day. One of us was talking to another person and we were leaving the party. And then we got into an argument about that conversation that one of us had with the other person. Okay. So again, it feels icky. We want to escape it. And in that case, they were turning it outward by trying to negotiate some escape from the feeling of jealousy, right? But what it was turning into was a misguided attempt to control it because it feels icky and they just didn't want to escape it. So it was basically some version, which is a really common thing that shows up in relationships. It was some version of, hey, I I was uncomfortable with you talking with that person over there and you can save me from feeling uncomfortable by just not doing that, okay? How's that going to work? You're just going to like hide yourself in a box and never talk to someone else so that your partner never feels jealous, right? That's the toxic form of outward jealousy that translates into an attempt to control and that is not going to support healthy intimacy in the relationship, right? So it's, but it's normal, right? It's normal that people do this. Um, But the thing was, if they were, and they did this in the therapy session, by the way, because of my questions that I was asking them, if they identified what is it that I think I'm not going to have, or what am I going to lose control of? One of the things that came out in that conversation was they were fresh into their relationship and dating, and they had never had the conversation, the conversation of, are we partnered? Are we monogamous? What are our normal, you know, accepted, mutually satisfying boundaries that we're going to have in our relationship? They were too fresh in the relationship to have done that, okay, although they were at the stage where it was appropriate to do that, and the jealousy constructively gave them a prompt to say, hey, I'm having these feelings and they're about fear of loss of something. Okay, if I take a look at it, what do I not want to lose? I don't want to lose you as a partner. I don't want you to have sex with someone else because I want to be a monogamous partner with you. And so identifying that then turned into a constructive externalization without a destructive internalization of shame, okay? And the constructive thing that they went on to do was to have explicit conversations about what they were up to in their relationship, okay? So if with jealousy and envy, because it feels so icky, we jump into, I want to escape it, then A, we rob ourselves of the potential awareness that leads to a way to deal with it constructively, okay? And our attempt to escape it might turn inward toward shame or a hit to our self-esteem, Um, Or it might turn outward into something that is aggressive, hostile, controlling, and and damages intimacy, right? Here's another example of envy in a relationship that a patient shared with me one time. And this is a common one, which is why I use this example. Um, This guy was telling me that he was having uh, anxiety attacks. And and when I asked him about why, what was the trigger, it was this common trigger. And it had to do with the fact that his wife had been married before him, and before their marriage, and she shared a kid with her ex-husband, so she had to have regular contact with her ex-husband due to co-parenting their shared kid. And it turns out that the, my patient uh, was, was feeling uh, extreme envy. He was identifying as jealousy, which is fine, but the thing was the ex-husband apparently made a lot of money. He was very wealthy, had a ton of money, had a big house, had a nice car. And when his wife had been in her relationship with him, because he was rich, they were able to take all these fancy, wonderful vacations of traveling all over the world. Okay, My patient, on the other hand, had a kind of skilled blue collar job, uh, you know, kind of decent living wage income, but not enough to have a big house, not enough to be able to take elective vacations all the time to fancy expensive locations, right? So he was constructing this imagination in his head. Anytime 
that he saw the ex-husband anytime he even knew that his wife was like talking on the phone oh hey when are you going to pick up our kid this weekend some benign conversation like that was an attachment that he had to this envy that got triggered by any reference to the ex-husband because of that wealth disparity issue right so he's making this comparison of himself against that and he's got this extreme envy of oh she shared this wonderful experience of this wonderful vacation to France with him and I can't afford to take us to France and so he was in 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 uh, touch with an extreme lack okay but what he was doing with it and the reason we were talking about it in therapy was because what happened was this would get triggered and he knew that he didn't have a time machine to go back and erase her history, right? He didn't have a magic button to hit and become wealthy. Uh, so he was stuck, but then he would turn it inward. And he knew that he couldn't like control his wife and say, get rid of your ex-husband, right? That wasn't feasible. And so he was in a bind. And what it was doing, it was turning inward into shame. So this regular occurrence of the trigger of extreme envy slash jealousy was popping up and he was quickly going into shame like I suck I suck because I don't make more money I suck because I'm having this reaction I suck because when it comes up then I get irritable and then my wife and I have a miserable evening it's because of my irritability and my irritability is stupid and irrational because it's this thing that I'm out of control of, right? And this cycle was repeating over and becoming more and more toxic because then he was becoming demoralized and more shameful at having such a reaction. And it was, it was bad enough to the point that he and his wife were actually contemplating separating because his wife, understandably, was saying, you know what? You're irritable so frequently and we have a bad evening so frequently. And out of the blue, I just talked to my ex-husband about like a parenting schedule thing or something, and then you're upset for the rest of the evening, and, and what's that doing to our relationship, right? So he was destructively wanting to escape it, couldn't escape it, then feeling shameful about being stuck in it. That was th causing mood dysregulation, right? So the recipe, again, is accepted that is normal. All of us have things that we fear we're going to lose. All of us have things that we don't have that in some moments we have this poignant, strong, compelling sense of lack, okay? Um, but it's normal, and if we accept that it's normal, then we can have compassionate awareness and say, what is it that I don't want to lose control of? What is it that I think that I lack, that I wish I had, okay? And maybe there's some fear there that you have to confront. Maybe there's some sorrow that there that you have to confront. This, this is why jealousy and envy are so complicated to deal with because it takes you know at least mid-level emotional competency and maturity to even be able to work with them right but the good news is practice can improve your competency and cause you to be more emotionally mature but it is hard and you have to have courage to be in that state of acceptance to take a look at what you think you're losing or might lose what you think you lack and then to think, is there something that I want to do to constructively deal with this, okay? Because in some situations, like the first example, the constructive thing was to actually have conversations about the status of the relationship and what they want to do moving forward, okay? In the second example, that is an example of learning strategies to shut the thing down, okay? Because beyond the awareness of where that was coming from for the guy in the second example, there's not a lot that that guy actually needs to do to constructively change himself or his world except to stop playing that game, okay? Stop making that comparison and dumping himself repeatedly into that strong position of sense of lack, okay? So the choice, just to be clear, is once we have the awareness, okay, then you're at that choice point. And the choice point is, do I shut it down, which often is the very first urge, which causes the toxicity, but after the awareness, then it is an appropriate choice point of, do I need to work to figure out how to shut this down so I stop having this reaction? Or the other choice is, is there something that I reasonably need to rationally and constructively do to address my world, to address me, to address my relationship in order to move forward in a more constructive way so that I take care 
of the reason that I'm having this trigger in the first place, okay? That's the choice point. But you can't jump to that choice point without the awareness, okay? We can't just have the icky, icky feeling of jealousy and immediately say, okay, I'm going to shut this down. That doesn't tend to work, okay? We also can't just jump with no awareness of, I feel icky, so I'm going to try to control the world to, to escape this feeling, okay? And if you're a partner of someone who's feeling jealous, you also can't say, oh, I recognize they're instantly jealous. I'm going to jump to shutting it down, or I'm going to jump to fixing it for them. It does not, a wor it does not work that way, okay? The recipe is accept that that feeling is normal, even though it's super icky and we want to escape it. Number two, approach it with open awareness so that you identify why that is happening in the first place and whether you're turning it inward or outward. And then choose a healthy, constructive way to deal with it if you need to actually change yourself or the situation. Or if that's not the right choice, learn how to shut it down. And if you're having trouble with either one of those strategies, talking to a therapist is a good idea because that's part of what we do. We help people sit in these complicated hellish emotional states with acceptance and with awareness in order to generate constructive strategies to get the kinds of outcomes that you want, which is positive change so that you are less miserable and you are more satisfied and happy in your life. So I wanted to share this about jealousy and envy because they are super common aspects of our emotional lives. They are common things that people bring up when they're talking in therapy, either as individuals or when couples come to therapy. I wanted to share this because I know that you feel jealousy some of the time. I know that you feel envy some of the time. And I don't want it to be a toxic part of your life. I want you to learn how to work with it constructively so that you thrive. Thanks for joining me today. If you like this kind of content, feel very free to hit the like button below. And feel free to subscribe to the channel as well. If you have a friend or partner who might benefit from watching this video, feel very free to share it with them as well. And then go discuss. All right, thanks. I'll see you in an upcoming video.